Hello everyone, in this video we are going to solve problem number 59 from the chapter of stress in the book of Mechanics of Materials by R.C. Hibler. In this problem we are being asked to determine the average normal and average shear stress at the plane of weld which joins these two steel members together. So let's solve this problem. So in order to solve this problem we have to take one portion or one steel member whether the, the top member or the bottom member and then we are going to determine the normal and average stress at the plane of weld. So let's take the bottom steel member since we are taking a section from a one complete body and that was an equilibrium because 15 kN force was acting upward and 15 kN force was acting downward that's why the body was in equilibrium so if you are taking any bottom portion or the top portion that particular portion will also be in equilibrium in other words I mean if the 15 kN force is acting downward on this member in order to balance this member there should be equal magnitude force should be acted upon this body so that this steel member would be in equilibrium therefore 15 kN force is also applied to the top portion of this bottom steel member now since we are being asked to determine the normal and shear stress on this weld therefore we can drive this 15 kN force into its components that means the one which will be parallel to the plane that will be the shear component and perpendicular to the plane which will be the normal component of this 15 kN force therefore the component which is parallel to the plane of the weld and the component which is perpendicular to the plane of the weld so this component of 15 kN force will help us in determining the shear stress at this plane of weld and this component will help us in determining the average normal stress on this plane of weld. So let's calculate these components. So in order to have better understanding let's convert this three dimensional figure to two dimensional figure so that we can easily understand and can calculate these components so now what we are being given we are being given with this angle which is 30 degrees from here so if this is 30 degrees so this will also be 30 degree that's quite simple there are two parallel lines and any line which cuts through it these are opposite angles would be equal therefore these are the two parallel lines and one line is cutting through these two lines if this is 30 degrees so this will also be 30 degree then now things are easier for us to determine the components so this 30 degrees making an angle with this component therefore the formula to determine this component of 15 kN force would simply be magnitude multiplied by cos of 30 degree and if it's 15 cos 30 the other component would be then 15 sin 30 degrees so this parallel component that we have just named them as a shear component so therefore let's represent that with v so on doing the simple calculations we are going to get the shear force as 12.99 newtons actually kilo newtons and on doing the simple calculations since this is normal force therefore we represent this with n and it will just give us the magnitude of 7.5 kilo newton so now we have uh, both the forces we want to determine the stresses for that we should be knowing the area on which these forces are acting i mean this shaded area so let's consider this shaded area since this shaded area is a rectangle and of that rectangle we know one dimension which is the width of the member which is 20 millimeters now we should be knowing the other dimension which is this dimension and with whatever dimensions we are being given we are not being actually given with this dimension 
we are being given with the this dimension which is 40 millimeter and uh, the other dimension the depth which is 20 millimeter the width which is given is 40 millimeter but the one which we are interested in is neither the width nor the depth so for that we need to do some calculations so in order to proceed further we know that this dimension the width is actually 40 millimeter and if we consider here as in a right angle triangle then in that right angle triangle we know that this angle is 30 so we are interested in the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle where the perpendicular is 40 and hypotenuse is required so we are going to use the trigonometric ratio which uses perpendicular and hypotenuse and which is sine so sine 30 degrees would be equal to the perpendicular which is 40 millimeter and uh, the hypotenuse which is actually the dimension of our interest so the dimension of our interest will then be equal to 80 millimeters so now we know this dimension which is 80 millimeter we know this dimension and this dimension therefore now we can easily calculate the shaded area so the shaded area will now be 20 multiplied by 80 so this will give us 1600 millimeter square or if you want in meter square then it will be 1.6 into 10 s to minus 2 meter square minus 3 actually so now we have shear force, we have normal force, we have the shaded area on which these forces are acting. So now we can easily calculate the normal and shear stress acting on the plane of the weld. So now the normal stress will be equal to 7.5, the normal force divided by the area which is 1.6 into 10 is to power minus 3. So this will give us the value of 4.5. 69 MPA and the shear stress would be equal to shear force which is 12.99 divided by area which is 1.6 into 10 s to power minus 3 on doing calculations we are going to get 8.12 MPA so now we are successful in determining the normal as well as shear stress acting on this plane of the weld which is actually joining these two members together so that's all from this video i believe you got the understanding of determining the average normal and the average shear stress acting on any plane which is loaded by some external forces if you still feel any difficulty please let me know through the comment section so that i can get back to you that's all from this video. Thank you for watching this video.